right, guys, let's take a look at our next problem. So this question is asking us uh, to evaluate the following limit without applying L'Hopital's rule. Now this is a limit as x is approaching to infinity, or in our case, negative infinity. And we need to be absolutely familiar with how to tackle this type of a problem as it shows up 100% of the time, either in your midterm or on your final. Now we should know that there are many different ways of solving this type of a problem. However, we're going to use a very specific method that I have devised for Math 203. Do not apply this method in other classes simply because there's probably more efficient ways of solving those problems. For example, in Math 205, we're going to take limits at infinity in a much more simpler manner. But the problems will also be simpler. Um, so the method I've devised is a very general method. The good news is that it applies to any problem as x approaches either infinity or minus infinity, and it's very specifically designed for Math 203. Before we start the problem, before I go over the procedure, there is one thing that you have to be absolutely mindful of. There is one big curveball that they love throwing in these problems, and that is this. We need to be crystal clear about the fact that the square root of x squared is not x, but rather the absolute value of x. This is where they like to throw us off. This being said, let's talk about how to tackle this problem, um, generally speaking. So it's usually a three-step process, maybe one additional step if this trick shows up, and the steps are as follows. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at every single one of our factors, in this case there's four of them, and we're going to simply factor out the highest power of x we see in every one of these four terms. Afterwards, we're going to leave the outside powers exactly where they are. We're not going to touch them. That's going to become step two, which is going to be to take this outside power and multiply it back in. And it's, that, it's at that step that we need to keep track of this guy right here. If all goes well, then the third step is um, to, going to be to plug this guy in because things on top and on the bottom will cancel out, as they often do in limit problems. And once we pl plug that in, our answer should reveal ourselves. So let's put this in play. Let's, uh, let's get this question up. So here's our question. And so the first thing we're going to do, like I said, is to factor out the highest power of x in each one of these four terms. Take a look at how this can be done. So we have the limit as x goes to negative infinity always. And in this term, I'm going to pull out an x cubed. And since there's an outside power, I'm going to use these square brackets. And if I pull it out, I am left with the following. So notice what I did over here. Pulling out an x cubed amounts to dividing each one of these three terms by x cubed. Notice once again, if I take this and I multiply it back in, I will get the original um, equation back. So I'm going to repeat this process three more times. Now the square root is like saying power of one half, so it's equivalent to having an outside power. So it's going to remain where it is, but I will factor out the x squared. If I factor out the x squared, what I'm left with is 9 plus 7 over x. And the square root can become a power like so. continue doing this process. Over here, I can pull out an x cubed. I don't need square brackets because there is no outside power. And finally, in my last term, I will pull out an x squared, leaving me with 1 minus 1 over x plus 10 over x squared, with an outside power of 2. So there you go. That's our first step. Take a look at it. Let it sink in. Practice this a couple of times until you get it. And there's only two more steps, hopefully, before we get our answer. Our next step is going to be to take this outside power and simply multiply it in both here and here. And we're going to do this three times in our example. Right there, right there, and right there. And so if we start doing this, here's what I am left with. 
limit as x goes to negative infinity. Now if I take 2 and I raise x cubed to the power of 2, that leaves me with x to the power of 6. For the second bracket there, I'm going to leave it exactly as it is, and I'll leave that 2 right there. And we're going to do this three times. However, here is where a bell needs to go off in your head. You need to recognize that you are taking the square root of x squared. That is not going to become x. This is going to be the absolute value of x. And as long as you're able to catch that, you're in great shape. The first term on the bottom stays intact, and I multiply the outside power once again. x squared squared is x to the 4, and the bracket remains as it is, and it gets that outside exponent of 2. So there we have our second step completed. However, we have a new problem. We recognize that there is an absolute value present in our limit. If we ever see this, we should know that our immediate next step needs to be to get rid of this absolute value. Let's have a very quick chat about how to get that done. So let's do some additional work on this side over here and talk about the absolute value. What we already understand is that the absolute value forces a number or whatever it contains within the parentheses to be positive. So for instance, if I have the absolute value of 3, we know that the absolute value is really not doing anything. We can simply remove it. However, it becomes a little bit more interesting when the value inside the absolute value happens to be negative. We understand here our answer is also going to be positive 3. The question becomes, can I achieve the exact same result without having these absolute values? And the answer is yes, we could. We can remove these absolute values, uh, brackets, and replace them with a negative sign. So if instead of having absolute value, if I had a negative sign, notice I would, uh, I would get the exact same result. So this is good, but it requires that we know in advance whether what is contained within the absolute value parentheses is positive or negative. If we know in advance it's positive, we can simply remove those brackets. And if we know it's negative in advance, we can still remove them. However, this time around, we're going to have to force a negative sign in front. So let's take a look at the problem we have currently. Currently, this is our problem. Now ask yourself whether this guy is a positive or negative value. Notice where x is going. x is approaching negative infinity. Clearly, x is a negative value, which means I can remove the absolute values, but I'll have to slap on a negative sign at some point, at some place. I'll put it up front over here. So let's take a look at how we can get that done. I have the ability to clone some of this stuff, so I'm going to do that. And our last piece. So over here, I'm going to remove the absolute values, leave it as an x, but there's going to be a negative sign that comes up in front. And now we're almost there, guys. Let's raise this back up so we get a little bit of room and get to our answer. At this stage, what will happen is something on top should cancel with something on the bottom. If we take a look at this a little bit more carefully and count the number of x's we have in the numerator, we will notice that there's an x and there's another 6 for a total of 7. In the denominator, we also have a total of 7, and this happens pretty much every single time. And it allows us to cancel the x's out. So these will go away, the x's will go away. And as per other Limit problems, usually when things cancel out on top and on the bottom, that is our cue to take the bottom value here and plug it in for every x. Now, if I was to take negative infinity and plug it in everywhere I see x, I will notice that a number divided by infinity gives us 0 over and over and over. 
So all of these terms where x happens to be in the denominator will simply go to zero. And like I said earlier, our answer will reveal itself. So what do we end up with? We end up with negative 1 plus 0 plus 0 to the power of 2, 9 plus 0 to the power of a half, all divided by 1 plus 0 multiplied by 1 minus 0 plus 0 squared. Now that's not going to take us too long to discover that the answer over here is simply negative 3. Right? The square root of 9 is 3 with a negative sign and everything else is just 1. So that's the answer to this problem. And before moving on to the next one, um, there is one thing that I'll like to mention very quickly. Notice that in this problem, I kept rewriting limit over and over and over. And you have to do the same thing, otherwise for sure they're gonna, you're going to lose marks. Okay? They, will, they look for this. Um, you know, we get lazy sometimes and forget to write this limit in. We need to write it over and over and over until we take the bottom value and plug it in, which is what I did here. That is when you can stop writing limit. Hopefully that clarifies this type of a problem up. Let's move on to the next one.